Today we have a question from a user on how to fill in a pretty tricky surface. Let's jump into it. We received a question from a user who so generously gave us this model to be able to make a video with. Now the user would like to fill in this area here and when we take a look at it, it's uh, somewhat bean shaped, right? And it has a constant uh, radius or constant diameter on this edge. So it's a little bit challenging to fill in because if you try to extrude, it'll often go past the boundary. If you, you can't extrude this way because of the curvature. So let's talk about a way that we can get this filled in. And of course, I would like to use my best friend surfacing to solve this. So the first way is we'll head over to the surface bench and create a surface from face. Now we'll create a surface off of this face. I'll maintain associativity, that's optional. It'll work either way, and we'll say okay. Now, I have a surface right on this face. I wanna move it, All right? So we'll move down this axis. So we'll say precise move, axis and edge here. And of course, select my surface. I'll move this a distance of 10 millimeters, and we'll say okay. Now, with this being moved or offset, our objective here is going to be we want to fill this surface in. We'll find a way that we can get an equivalent of this surface to be completely filled in. Then we can move the surface back, give it a thicken, and uh, we should be good to go. So let's go with this plane, and uh, I'm going to make an extrude here. And with this on, I'll go ahead and make a circle. I'll also import the sketch as a reference with maintain association, of course. I'm going to say that these circles are going to be equal. I'm going to make this circle vertical with the other one, right? Because we offset this surface 10 millimeters. So I'll grab center to center and go a distance of 10. And now our surface and our sketch actually take up the same space on my screen. So I've got this sketch and this uh, circle here that has the same curvature. We're going to go with a mid-plane extrude and we'll say a depth of something big like 500. Now from here, I can go to my surface tab and delete the ends of my cylinder and that makes the cylinder into a surface itself. Now I want to take this surface because these two surfaces are just overlapping, taking up the exact same space. Let's use this surface as a tool to cut our cylinder into the shape that we want it and then we'll get a filled in surface. So I'm gonna go with trim up here and I select both of my surfaces. And then what do I wanna remove? I'll remove my cylinder here. And now we have exactly what we want, a filled in version. One other thing that I can do, right? Because I'm all done now with this surface. Uh, I don't need it anymore. So I can go with delete face and I can choose the face of my surface that I wish to delete. And now as I scroll through the tree, I'm not gonna be confused by having a whole bunch of different surfaces at the end, but that takes system resources. I've also been advised that I can just right click and hide the surface when I'm all done using it. But that can be a little bit complicated if you need to go back and edit something. So I do like deleting face to get rid of surfaces when I'm all done just to keep things organized, but it's totally up to you. There's pros and cons with each way. The other thing I can do instead of deleting face is I can go to my trim surface and I can remove this region as well and just make it a little bit more clean, save something in my tree. Either way, we'll move with a precise move. We'll select our axis. We'll go a distance of 10 again and we'll reverse it and of course select my surface. So now the surface is resting exactly on the face that we want to fill in. So it's just a simple amount, a simple matter of choosing thicken. And uh, the thickness of this part is gonna be 3.175. 
we'll say OK to that. Now that I'm all done with this surface, I can pull my classic delete face, or you may just want to hide it if you want more system performance and rebuild performance and all that. But either way, we should be pretty good here. I have this edge that resulted from the thickened surface that I want to get rid of because it's not meant to be there. So we'll go to Model and Remove Face, and we'll remove the parts that uh, we don't want, right? So now that's gone, and we have a nice clean edge going all the way around. Next, I want to smooth things out a little bit by filleting. So we'll grab a fillet here, and I could probably just select this whole face, and we'll say 12.7, but we want to subtract our material thickness, so we'll say minus 3.175, and we'll apply that. After that, we we'll want to do this outside here. So I'll say 12.7. We'll see if I can do this as well. Nope. That's because there is a small edge on that Boolean that will just break this up into two, just like that. Okay, so if I go to inspect, Look like we have a pretty constant thickness there. And here, looks like we have a pretty constant thickness as well. So we're able to maintain a good constant thickness as we filled that in. Finally, we can do a little check here. Very high. And we have no failures in our geometry. So we've, uh, we've done this pretty cleanly. And that is one way that we can fill in the surface. So that's how we get that together and fill in that tricky surface. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the Libre channel and we'll see you in the next one.